Okay, so um, a big friendly warm hello to everyone who has tuned in for what is my first ever attempt at any sort of live streaming. Um, basically what we're going to try and do tonight is have a look at the code behind the game that I wrote about a week and a half ago for the 2018 Lara Hack that Lee Crosdale ran over at larahack.com. The theme was to build a game um, and I eventually, after uh, a lot of indecision, chose to build a game around the Spotify API where you would have to uh, name a given song within 30 seconds of the uh, of the tune playing. Uh, it took me about three or four hours and uh, it ended up winning second prize, which I was very happy with. So, here is um, PHP Storm. Obviously, we've got the folder open. I'm just going to go over to my other um, screen and show you a few of the websites that were involved in the making of this project. So, obviously, as I've mentioned already, there, one of those was the um, Lara Hack website, which you can get to via larahack.com. This was set up by Lee Crosdale. Uh, apologies, Lee, if you're tuning in, I've pronounced your surname wrong there. And um, basically, the thing, the idea was that you would sign up. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the concept of a hackathon. And um, basically, the idea for those of you who aren't is that you are given a particular theme at the start of the project and then you are given a set amount of time, in this case it was 48 hours, to write a project in a given framework or sometimes they're a little more free than that so that you can uh, you can write you can write something that fits in with the theme and there are prizes. So Lee set this one up for about a week and a half ago and um, it was to write a game using the Laravel framework and uh, which isn't something you would normally try and uh, associate with web frameworks I guess so it was a, a good choice of theme and there were quite a few entries I know um, shout out to Patrick if he's watching for Farmerville which was the one that won um, but the first thing I had to do was go to the Spotify developer website and sign up for a key so you go to the my app section you know if you've worked with APIs in the past you'll know what it's all about um, the next thing I did was, and I'm going to have to look it up because I'm not sure which one it was, it's this one, Jay Wilson's Spotify Web API PHP package, framework agnostic, um, so not specifically for Laravel, uh, uses PHP 7, uses curl, it's usual, usual thing, composer install, and then you've got to get, because we're not dealing with user-specific data here, you've got to get a client credentials token using the API. Uh, it's not documented on the front page, but there is some very good documentation in this package. Uh, here we go, obtaining an access token using the client credentials flow. And we'll see this uh, piece of code repeated in a fashion in my project in a minute. So once you've got the client credentials token, you can begin making requests to the API. So let's switch over now to the code and have a little look. And so basically the entire game runs off or it ran off before I put the leaderboard in one controller. Uh, and it's this one here, the game controller. Fee try that again, forgive me. If I'm using the mouse, I'm not making excessive use of keyboard shortcuts. I'm not, I'm not like a wizard with the keyboard. I'm not somebody who can use the side, like live without the sidebar. I haven't been through Jeffrey's series on Laracasts or anything yet. Um, but you know, I'll get there. And, and one of these days I'll be as quick as your Jeffrey ways or your Adam Wathams, I'm sure. But this is my first go, so, so go easy on me. Um, so what we've got here is our game controller. Um, so you can see here's the Spotify web API being pulled in via a use statement and then just three private variables. And, you know, this this took me three hours in a mild state of panic at the end of a, uh, at the end of a hackathon. So it's not going to be the cleanest code you've ever seen, but it does the job. Um, if there's a little bit of time left at the end of this, I will maybe try to tidy it up a little bit. So 
what we've got to begin with is we've got um, the constructor on the game controller which uses caching uh, so we start off by attempting to get an access token from the APA APA? API? You can tell this is live, I'd edit that out in post maybe when it goes on YouTube um, so we've got the access token here uh, if we don't have one in the cache, so we're using the, uh, the cache facade here we go off and we uh, create a Spotify, a Spotify client I did that one out in post too using the uh, client ID and client secret we got when we signed up from the developer website and uh, once we've got these, once we've set up our client we can then request a credentials token here using the uh, API's fun, uh, request credentials token method and um, that token will come with an expiry limit so here we are basically um, storing or getting the number of ex uh, in expiry minutes because the token expiry comes back in seconds I'll get there in a minute I will or 60 seconds even um, so once you've got the tokens expiry time you've got to divide it by 60 to get the number in minutes and then we can put the cache we can put the access token in the cache um, for that given number of minutes and then when that expires we won't have it in the cache anymore we can do it again I mean looking at this this is one of the first things I would be refactoring because I could just use cache remember on this if I knew how long the access token was going to last for so that's probably one of the things I'll do later if I get some time so once we've got our access token the next thing we have to do is connect to the API and start asking it things so we'll instantiate the Spotify API here just using a new Spotify web API and we need to pass it the access token from the cache so we've got that up here and then we pass it in to the Spotify API here so that we can begin to make some calls the next thing we need to do is we need a playlist. One of the things I'm going to do with this game in the future is allow you to select a playlist from a given list. So maybe there'll be a playlist from the 80s, best decade by the way, playlist from the 90s, playlist from the noughties. The current playlist that it uses is the every number you every UK number one ever playlist. There's about 1,300 songs in it, but here's the catch. Spotify's API will only allow you to fetch 100 uh, songs or 100 tracks per, lit, per, per page. So what I did, because I didn't really have time to build some proper pagination into this, was, um, well, you can see it here. If we don't have a playlist or a snippet of the playlist in the cache, what we do is there's about 1,000, I think it's 1,100, 1,300, something like tracks in it. So we get a random offset between 0 and 900, 0 being the most recent ones, your Ed Sheeran's, your Bruno Mars's, people like that. 900 being sort of back in the 60s, 70s, whenever it was they started um, officially charting at the official charts company. And uh, with that offset, we then grab and store in the cache at the playlist key we go to the Spotify API and we ask for user playlist tracks from the official chat user and this is the ID in Spotify of the every UK number one ever playlist and then we pass in the offset as an option so we're saying for example if this was 34 start 34 tracks in and then we get a hundred tracks and we're storing this in the cache for two minutes which means that every two minutes the game if somebody is playing it is making a request to the Spotify API for a random selection of a hundred tracks from the every UK number one playlist what this means is it cuts down on the repetition a little bit because one of the problems I was having with one of the playlists I was using earlier in development was that it was a very short playlist not all of the songs had preview urls which means you couldn't use them in the game and it was repeating songs over and over again which is a problem um, i've had to fix on which more later so every two minutes it goes back to the spotify api and it grabs a random sample of 100 songs i mean it's 100 songs in sequence so 
if it starts at zero, it's the last 100. You can't, as far as I can remember, request a true random 100 songs. So if it starts at zero, then you do just get the last 100 number ones. If it starts at 100, you get number ones 100 to 200 in the list and so on. But every two minutes, it refreshes that list to add a little bit of variety and basically so that, you know, it's not all just Ed Sheeran. Um, or it's not all just Britney Spears if we go back to the 90s. And what we then do once we've got this is it's in the cache. So we assign it to the Spotify chart property of the controller. And that's the constructor completed. Next thing we've got to do is we've got um, a root here. Game controller at index. And that is basically the home page one of the th one of the other things i'm going to do with this is at some point i'm going to put a proper home page on it because as you'll see when i actually go to a gameplay demo later the game starts as soon as you open it up which if you're not expecting it can be a, a bit of a shock to the ears especially if you've got headphones um or you you know you've got them up too loud you go to the website and bang the music starts playing straight away because it's only a 30 second sample how big a you know it's not big an mp3 so it, uh, it loads pretty quickly, which is which is handy for a game like this because you need to be quick. So we go to the game controller index function, and uh, what we've got here is we do have a request, although we're not using it. You can see there, PHP Storm has grayed it out because it's not being used anywhere. And the first thing we do is we get a session of recently used tracks, and the reason we do this is to cut down on the repetition issue that I mentioned earlier. Um, what the game is doing is it will store the 20 last correct answers in a session and it will then avoid using those as correct answers until they've cycled back out of the array again. Now we only have 100 songs at a time so that does technically mean 20 songs after you've heard a particular song it could come straight back around again but it does at least cut down on the repetition. It's I had a playlist that only had 50 songs in it, and once you filtered it down, it only had about 30 songs I could actually use. And there were times, I don't know whether it's to do with the way that computers don't really generate random numbers properly if you're asking it to do them quickly enough, but there were points where I got the same song two or three times in a row, and that just doesn't feel very random. So I had to do something to get around that. So we've got the 20 most recent songs in this variable here, recent. And then we need to take the track list from our Spotify chart and tracks are returned. Um, the Spotify web API by default uses JSON, uh, which is great because you know we love JSON APIs. And uh, the tracks within that response are returned as items. So within our Spotify chart property, we have an items collection, an items array. Uh, well, it's an array to start with because we've got it via JSON, but we need to turn it into a collection so that we can start using some collection methods to filter through it. And uh, if you don't have Adam Waffen's course and uh, book on refactoring to collections, then I highly recommend it. Um, I think you still got it on sale, although it is a couple of years old now. It's, it's a great little reference for um, using collections to filter things through. So here it is, adamwathen.me slash refactoring hyphen two hyphen collections. Great book and great little video course. And so is this test driven Laravel one, actually, which um, it's gonna sound a bit product placement -y. It's really not, it's just brilliant. It's just a brilliant course. Um, he's got it on an early access discount until Friday. So that's maybe worth looking into as well. So if we go back to our code, we can see here I'm using some of those collection methods to filter through the uh, tracks that we have. So the first thing we want to do is we want to reject any track that doesn't have a preview URL, because if you can't hear the song, how are you going to, uh, to name the tune? So reject the track if it doesn't have a preview URL. So to do this, we just call the reject method on the collection and it loops through passing each one in as a track and it will return true if the tracks preview URL is empty. So this will get rid of any track from the collection that has an empty preview URL. 
And what that leaves us with is a list of tracks that have preview URLs so that we can actually use them. What we then need to do after that is we need to make sure that we don't have we don't pick the same tracks over and over again. So the next thing we do is we take that collection that we have now of songs with valid preview URLs and we pass them through a second reject filter. Um, and again, I could probably factor this to make it use one reject filter. Um, reject the track if it appears in the recents lists. So the recents session is just an array of track IDs. So we check to see using the contains uh, contains method from Laravel's collections if it contains a given track ID and if it does we reject it. So we finally have a list of tracks that have valid preview URLs and haven't been used recently and with that list we shuffle it to randomize them and then we take the top three. So what we now have are three possible answers to the question of what song is playing. So we will take the first track from that little collection and that can be our correct answer. And we get the correct answer variable from the correct tracks track ID. You get a list of items, each of those items then has a track property inside it which contains all the details of the track like the artist, the track and so on and so on. You might be able to hear Italian in the background, don't worry about it. So once we know which track we're using as our correct answer, we can add that to our recents collection. And then what we need to do in order to prevent the session from getting a little too big is we have a look and see if we've got more than 20 now, we slice it. So we're taking, because push will put that new song at the top of the list. So what we want to do is we want to take the last 20. And then we want to return the values because we, we need to renumber them. Otherwise what was happening was you would go 0 to 19 and then 1 to 20, 2 to 21. Using values just keeps it 0 to 19 all the time. It's a little bit neater on the inside and we put that back into the session. So what we then do, in order to make sure that when we display the form later, the top answer isn't always the correct one, is we then need to shuffle the answers that we have, the tracks that we have. Because otherwise, correct track is always the first one, which doesn't make for a very fun game. And then we store that in uh, a session so that we can check it when the user submits an answer. And then what we do is we show the form. So we return a view, which is just the form view, um, with our three possible answers, uh, a session variable, which is flashed from the last guess they had to tell them whether they got it right or not, how many points they scored, the track, which is the correct answer, uh, so that we can start playing it and an update which again is a flashed session from their last guess telling them whether they got it right or wrong or they timed out so I'm going to flick over to my left monitor now and show you what that form actually looks like so you're going to get a little snippet of music here I hope it's a good one I'm just going to minimize OBS So, this is what the front end of the game looks like. Hopefully the music isn't as loud for you guys as it is for me. But uh, you can hear a song playing now and you can see over here we've got a countdown. I'll run through the HTML and the JavaScript in a minute. And um, so we know the answer to this one and we click it. So I've got two points for that one. The quicker you answer, the more points you score. I'll get to that in a second. So this one is that one there. And then 
I'm gonna get one wrong because well, nobody's perfect. We'll go. We'll say this is OMG by Usher. It's obviously not, but you know, nobody's perfect. Can't win them all. So that's the game's basic interface. We're gonna go a lot further with this once the game's actually finished. But this is where it got to by deploy time on the uh, on the Sunday night. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to the leaderboard now. I'll uh, I'll talk more about that later. But it's the only way to actually shut the game up for the time being. I'm gonna go back to the code now. So I'll just give you a quick run through of how that form is actually built. Obviously, when you start a new Laravel project, it comes with Bootstrap uh, built in as a preset. Didn't use Bootstrap for this one. I tend to waver between the two, um, Bulmer or Bootstrap. I went with Bulmer for this one. So we've got a master view. Um, I actually have a talk on YouTube, uh, plug, 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 that goes through the... Um, Blade syntax. Uh, it's about a 45 minute talk. I gave it at a, a PHP new uh, user group meeting last year. The first live, live talk I'd ever given. And um, so what we've got here is basically a master view, standard HTML5 document, pulling Bulma from a CDN, Font Awesome 5 to give it some nice icons. Um, some really basic styling just to get things um, horizontally centered although I will say it is an absolute mess on mobile at the moment so don't look at it on your phones nobody look at it on your phones and uh, a little logout form up here there's a little trick to this that I, I learned while I was building this and I'm going to share with you um, I don't know how many people are actually watching but if one of you actually learns the same trick as I did from this then it's a good takeaway we've got the form here and you'll notice there's only a CSRF field in it and the trick is, when we get down to the end of the form, we've got a little, this is the Bulma nav bar. I mean, look at all those divs, it's crazy. <laughs> um, so there's the, the Spotify logo, which I'll probably have to take down. It's creating an association that probably isn't official. I'll be in trouble for that. Um, and then you've got the link to the leaderboard, standard Laravel auth check to see if you're logged in because you can create an account uh, if you want to appear on the leaderboard and have your scores and your accuracy tracked. So standard auth check, if we're logged in, display the user's name and display, and this is the trick, display the logout button. Now the logout route in standard Laravel auth has to be a post. You can, I think with a bit of legwork, change it to be a get request, but I didn't want to do that. But if I put the form inside this div then the layout here was basically skewed the extra padding that having the form here creates means that that button was out of alignment so what i ended up doing what i ended up finding out was it is actually possible to have a button outside possibly other inputs as well you can have a button outside of the form tags as you can see here so we've got the form up here and then we've got the actual submit button down here outside the form tags and the magic trick is that you can put a form attribute on the input tag that will link it to the form with that id so you can see up here we've got id logout form and we've got form equals logout form here and uh, what that does is it links the input to the form even though it's not inside the form tags. I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> so yeah, I learned something new that weekend and maybe you've learned something new tonight. Maybe everyone else knew it and I'm the last one to find out. Mm -hmm. There's an XKCD about that. There's an XKCD for everything. So if you aren't logged in, then you've got register, login, and this one was added via a pull request by a colleague of mine at work who wants to be known only as Bat Duck. Why not? Um, to allow you to log in through Facebook, through Laravel Socialite package. And uh, we're going to add some other social logins, of course. What good would a game based on the Spotify API be if you couldn't log in via Spotify at some point? Maybe use your own playlist for the game. And then end if. So there's a little auth check there. And then we yield the content and a little footer just to say that this was created for Lara Hack by um, me. And if you do want to follow me on Twitter, by the way, 
you've probably spotted it by now, but there's a link in the bottom right hand corner um, just to my Twitter account if you aren't following me already, on which I will occasionally talk about web development, but honestly, it'll probably mostly football. So we go back to the form in which I uh, have apparently modified something according to the pencil icon. There we go. So it extends master, fairly standard blade again. And uh, again, right for refactoring. Uh, three little sections depending on what the last answer was, if there was a last answer, um, in which we display three different alerts. You saw those, well, you saw right and wrong. What can also happen is if a user doesn't submit a guess within the 30 seconds, it will time out and take them to the next song and show them a message saying, you know, don't forget to guess the next one, which is just this bit here. So again, standard Bulmer elements here. I'm not really doing anything overly customized. And, um, and then here's the tag containing the preview URL from uh, Spotify, which is an audio tag. It's hidden, it's got no controls because, you know, if the user can pause the song and then go look it up, that's, that's cheating, I guess. So we've got an audio tag, it's invisible to the user and it's got an autoplay attribute on it so that as soon as the page loads and as soon as the audio is available it begins to play. And that's sourced via the preview URL, Spotify delivers those as MP3, so we've got the type there. And then we've got the guest form, um, which has three buttons on it and what we have here is the Laravel CSRF field. Again, with more time, I would probably have pulled in a form package, something like um, Boot Forms or the Laravel Collective Forms package. Although I must admit, I haven't used that in a while. I'm not sure whether it's uh, being kept up to date these days, whether it's still compatible with 5.5. I'll have to go and look at that because I will need it in a future project. And then we've got an input here for time. I'll explain what that does later. And then we come to the, I'm just going to um, go back to the form a second. So you can have a look at that. I'm going to mute Chrome now so that it doesn't uh, disturb anyone. So you can see here we've got your standard two column layout. This is just a HTML5 progress uh, element, which I'll show you in a second. Write answers, score, and three answers. If we log out, then it gives you a prompt to register or log in and a Facebook login button here. Again, thanks to Bat Duck for that one. So if we go back over to the code, you can see here's our answer now, and you'll get strong tag points, progress element with a maximum value of 30, current value of zero, and another auth check, just so that we can show them their current score if they're uh, if they're logged in and playing. Um, songs correct and songs seen, which are database columns, and the user score, which again is a database column. Otherwise, if they're not logged in, it says, Do you want to appear on the leaderboard? offers them the option of registering and logging in. One of the things we're working on at the moment is that if you register with an email address and then you attempt to sign in with Facebook from the same email address, it crashes. But we'll sort that one out. It's it's one of the issues on GitHub. The code is on GitHub. Um, I'll put the URL in the chat later on for that if anybody does want to have a, a longer review of it or if you want to get involved, we are happy to accept pull requests, contributions and so on. There is a wiki document with the minimum spec that we're hoping to achieve before we launch this thing properly. Uh, so that's the alternatively login with social media. And then I guess the important part of the form, which is the answers. So for each answers, which was passed through when we returned the view in the controller, uh, a button with some nice fonts or some icons around the artists, uh, the track name and the artists, which are, which in the JSON is an array. Um, there's, you know, a lot of songs have a lot of artists featured on them which led to some pretty insane looking buttons until I put measures in place to deal with this. Um, we had some songs that had like four or five different artists on them and the button was like the width of the screen, it was ridiculous. 
So we're using Laravel's built-in str underscore limit function here to just display 25 characters. And if it is longer than 25 characters, we just get dot, dot, dot at the end. And then another nice font awesome music icon to close off the button at the other end. And now we come down to the script, which in the master template appears here. And uh, we're not using anything fancy here. No front end frameworks, no view, no jQuery, just uh, good old fashioned vanilla JavaScript. And uh, what we have is a set interval function uh, closure, which runs, are there closures in JavaScript? I'm not even sure. I've to them one up. But what we've got is a set interval here, which runs every 10 milliseconds. So 10 times a second. And what that does is it gets the elapsed time from the audio element. So the audio element has the ID of song, document docket element by ID song, dot current time, will give us a float from between zero and 30, which tells us how much of the song has currently elapsed. Excuse me, while I take a swig of tea. And then we update the progress bar with the uh, elapsed time. So the play time is the progress bar and document to get them by ID time. Time is the uh, hidden form input that I mentioned earlier on, just to remind you here it is. So we are storing uh, in a form field. Again, perhaps a better way to do this, looking at it again. We're storing the current elapsed time of the song in a form field that will be posted when the user makes their guess. And there's a reason for this, which I'll get to in a second, or you've probably guessed having seen me play it for a little bit earlier. And here we have a little bit of math to work out the score. In fact, I'm not gonna go back to the controller. I'm gonna explain how the scoring works now. We're going to change it when the game launches so that it's point scored out of 10 points for quick answers. But basically what this little uh, line of code does here is it works out a number from between five and one for um, depending on how long of how much of the song has elapsed so that we can tell the user how many points they're going to score if they answer at that particular point because we want them to try and guess quickly and if they get it right we'll award them with more points it starts at five it drops to one if they're uh, if they go right at the end and and get it right at the death and then Obviously we've got the uh, the strong element with the ID of score. So we just put the uh, score now into the inner text of that. And then here we have a little bit of code that is called if the song reaches the end. So document.getLMAID song dot on ended. And we just go to, and again, refactoring, need a way of doing this. Uh, location.href equals timeout, which if we go back to our web roots, we can see here is a game controller at timeout function. So that's the basic HTML behind the game, uh, very basic HTML. And um, so if we go back to our game controller function, what happens when the user clicks one of the guesses is we go, we make a post request to this guess root, uh, which if we look in our web roots is game controller at guess. One of the things I want to do with this as well is, and I'm mentioning Adam Wathen again, but he did a great talk, a great video, I can't remember where it was, in which he talks about how the seven basic controller functions are all you usually need when you're uh, writing any application. They're all on some level just CRUD, so index, create, store, edit, update, destroy, and show. Um, so what I want to try and do is refactor this around that principle so that I'm not creating any custom controller methods and I am just using the ones I need from that seven. Um, I'll try and find the video later on and I'll put the link in the chat for anyone who wants to watch that. So if we go and have a little look at this game controller guess function, uh, here it is, and this time we are getting something from the request, unlike in the index where we weren't using it. So we start the answer um, in the previous, in the index method, we start the answer as a track ID in a session, and we are now getting that track ID in the request as the button that they've clicked. 
and we want to see if they're right. So if they are, if request answer is equal to the answer session, then well done, then they've got the right answer. And if they um, did, they, we award them a score based on their answer speed. So here's the PHP version of that JavaScript function we just looked up. It works out how many points they score, five down to one. And then if they are logged in, we update the database to update the number of songs they've seen, the number of songs that they've got correct, and their score. And we do this. I was using Laravel's increment function, but I think it results in three update queries, which is a little inefficient. So I've done this update method against the user model, and I'm using DB raw to directly pass in song seen plus one, songs correct plus one, score plus whatever the last score is, should be safe from SQL injection Laravel protects against that sort of thing. And I've got full control over what's being passed in here anyway. So I'm not too concerned about that one. And then we store, we just set the variable update to right because we're going to pass that back later. Uh, if on the other hand, so this is if they got it right. If they got it wrong, then last score is zero because they didn't score any points for a wrong answer. And again, if they're logged in, we just need to increment the songs seen because they didn't get it correct, so we don't need to increment that. And they didn't score any points, so we don't need to update that. So this time we can just use the increment method on the user model to increment the song seen column in the database. And update is wrong. And then we redirect back to the game form, which is just that slash, with a couple of flashed sessions containing the last score they got and their update. So we can see that. Oh, just sorry for a second, OBS was uh, showing me a big red light on the stream quality, so I apologize if anybody's just had some. Uh, difficulties with the streaming there. Hopefully it's back up and running now. It's a nice green light and a, about 2,600 2, kilobits a second. So hopefully you're uh, all seeing everything okay again. So the other, uh, the other route that we saw there was if a user doesn't guess, then we quite simply, we just, we just time them out. Um, so it redirects them via JavaScript to a timeout method. And this is all this does public function timeout, um, which is just another method on the game controller. And if the user was logged in, then we increment song scene, which is just the same as up here. Potential for refactoring that into a single method since it's repeated code. Rather a violation of the don't repeat yourself principle. And then we redirect back to the game form with an update just saying timeout. And obviously no last score session flashed in this one because they didn't get a score. We could flash last score zero, but it's probably not necessary. And so the loop repeats. We go back to the game controller index function. We pick a new song. And we play the game again. So quick demo of everything. I'm just going to flick back to my other monitor. So we can see the leaderboard here. I'll explain how that works in just a second. We do have a few players in the game. Um, I'm now running second. I will catch you, Joel Stanford. So if we go back to the game, I'm going to have to unmute it, otherwise I'm not going to be much good here. So you can see it's selected a different selection from every UK number one ever. I think it was slightly more modern songs earlier. I'm ashamed to say I do know this. And this. So I've got five points for a quick answer there. You can see here, if we wait for this to count down a little bit, it's going to start dropping four points. I'm going to refactor that so that it becomes out of 10 when we launch it for real. But I think it's every three seconds dropping down creates a little bit of pressure. And what we're going to do as well is if you get a wrong answer, it's going to take those points off you. So if, you, if you're just spamming buttons, trying to score really quick points, it's going to cost you points because you're going to be getting more wrong than you really right. So while I've been talking, that song's timed out. So it says, you know, don't forget to guess the next one. 
because uh, who, who doesn't love a bit of Ricky Martin? So four points for that one. Now I'm not logged in, so it's not actually logging these scores against my account. Um, this one's Oasis. So if we log myself back in now, a moment of silence. That's a lot louder in my headphones than it is on the stream. On the stream, I think I have turned OBS down, but I can't do anything about the music in my headphones. I can barely hear myself think. So I'll log myself back in. Um, remember me? I probably don't need to do that for now. I'll log myself back in. So now I'm playing the game as myself. So you can see here, 67 out of 69 songs, 328 points. And so I'll just go get a few more right answers because I've got some catching up to do. Oh, and you can see here, uh, what was the last song there? ATB, that was what, the 90s? But now it's refreshed the playlist with a new selection after the, the two minute refresh cycle. And these definitely aren't songs from the 90s. And I genuinely don't know what this is. Uh, is it that? No, nope, got it wrong. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's a classic. The only other problem I may have with this, and I'm not really sure how to solve it, is sometimes the samples that Spotify uses rather give the game away a bit. Um, let's see if I can find one that's a good example. Uh, ooh, uh, I don't know this one. Is that? Yeah, great. Let's see. No, that one. There you go. Within, what, three seconds of that one starting, you actually heard the lyric, Jealous Mind. So I wonder what song this might be. I think it might be that one. There we go. Oh, and who doesn't know this anyway? So there we go. I've got 77 out of 80 now. I've got 374 points. And I'm still 124 points behind Jill Stanford. I will catch you. What I would like to do is develop it further. I'm waiting on that. It's been, as you can see from the URL there, it's uh, it's being it's been called Song Expert now. So the source code is at GitHub. If anybody wants to have a longer nosy around it, um, maybe have a, a little look. You know, again, if you are interested in helping to collaborate with this one then we do have a few little issues, things we're going to look into. The wiki does have an MVP specification um, for the sort of version that I'd like to get to before we reach. One of the things I want to do with this as well, uh, in fact, I think it's somewhere in here. Um, you've, a few of you have probably heard of OmniPay, um, the gateway provider for taking payments in, uh, in Laravel PHP. What I'd like to do, which would probably make it a little easier for me to switch out providers if Spotify eventually turned around and go, actually, we're not going to let you develop this any further, is I would like to develop OmniPay for streaming providers, if you will. I'm not sure how to describe it, but basically a common API that wraps all of the different iTunes, Spotify, Deezer, Google Play, I don't know, does Pandora have an API? Does Amazon have an API just for music? I'm not sure. But, um, yeah, stuff like that, basically. Um, so that if Spotify did turn around and say, nah, you're not doing it, um, I can find a willing streaming provider and basically just drop their, uh, drop their API straight in with as little modification as possible. So just a quick walk through the leaderboard before I do leave you, um, because I did say I'd have a look at that. Switch back to monitor two. I love it when OBS gets that crazy looping thing, infinite, infinity mirror type thing in the background. Uh, it's great. So we've got uh, the one thing that is in its own controller is the leaderboard which is really simple. I mean, it's almost not worth a walk through, but uh, just use a few more minutes. Um, you can see here as well, the socialite routes for logging in through Facebook. Um, so we'll go to the leaderboard controller. Wherever that one, wherever that one is, leaderboard controller. I mean, literally, there it is, it's that simple. Um, the index function, only method on it which is user odd by score descending. And then we settle ties by working out how many songs they've got correct. So 
if two users have the same score, then we break that tie by looking at the number of songs they've got correct. Because if you've scored the same number of points in fewer songs, that means you're answering quicker, so you go up the leaderboard. And we get that. And we return a view into which we pass our leaderboard. And the leaderboard is literally just another quick extension of master with a content section, one column um, from Bulma, Flexbox framework, of course, and a little table, name, number of songs correct, number of songs seen, and score, and then a simple blade for each, leaderboard is row, and a little highlight, so if we go back to the game, we should be able to see on the leaderboard, when did I put the leaderboard? I've closed the leaderboard. Here it is. So you can see I've got myself highlighted because I am logged in as myself right now. Um, I've got David in third, Leandro in fourth, Rob fifth, and go work a bit who's registered but hasn't actually played. If anybody does want to play, I'm just going to put the link in the chat now. So basically, and then there's no scripts here, so we've got an empty script section. And uh, I think that's pretty much it from me for this one. So again, yeah, um, thank you very much for tuning in. If you do have any uh, suggestions as to improvements I can make, either just to my presenting style as much as anything, if you know I'm new at this first time out, pretty happy with how it's gone, I think. But uh, all feedback will be taken on board, as long as it's constructive. Um, if you do want to uh, contribute anything to the project or, or help me out, then the source code is on GitHub. Posted the link in the chat earlier. And uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm over at uh, twitter.com slash mickeyx, where, again, um, I will probably talk about football more than Laravel, to be quite honest with you, but I, I, I do try to get both of them in there at some point. Uh, Digital Ocean drop a link there if you want to help me out. You'll get ten dollars and, and I'll get a little bit of credit as well. Although having won the hackathon, I'm I'm, I'm set for the year, um, and I am actually looking forward to the next one. And if anybody does want to take part in the next hackathon, it starts on May the fourth. I think that counts down to it might be May the fifth. It's the bank holiday weekend at the beginning of May. I know that much. Um, obviously, theme will be announced when it starts. It's at larahack.com if you want to join in. And hopefully there'll be some great competition in that one. I look forward to uh, seeing what everybody can come up with for the next one. So thanks to Lee Crossdale again for running that, for, for running the first one. And uh, yeah, this was a walkthrough of how I built uh, the, it was called Name That Tune. It's going to be called Song Expert when it launches. So once again, thank you very much for tuning in. And uh, I will see you all next time. Good night.